So first, we'll discuss about the pure vasopressors. We have phenylephrine and vasopressin. Phenylephrine acts through alpha one receptor. This acts through V one and V two receptor. They are potent vasoconstrictors, but their action on cardiac output is questionable because they do not have a direct action on the heart. Right? Vasopressin use is mainly a second line agent in septic shock or also you can use it in central diabetes in speeders all the drug of choice remains all the desmopressin also it is used in variceal hemorrhage or hepatorenal syndrome although the drug of choice there remains talipressin careful so do not give via peripheral line second be aware of limb ischemia so give through central line now coming to phenylephrine the potent vasoconstrictor so what will it do it will constrict the artery and vein both so in terms it will increase the svr increase the preload because when the vein will contract preload will increase right so overall effect on cardiac output is questionable because if the heart is working well the if you increase the preload cardiac output will increase but if the heart is not working properly then what will happen is if you increase the preload here it can actually decrease the cardiac output right so it depends upon the baseline cardiac function so if the baseline cardiac function is good then phenylephrine will increase the cardiac output if it is bad it will decrease the cardiac output so in this situation also we have to target the map not stroke volume not cardiac output why because they are variable right it is generally used in and it is a very typical side effect it is very very useful for us that is it causes reflex bradycardia so it can be used in patient who has for example septic shock with a fib spinal shock pure vasodilatory shock or post spinal anesthesia can be given peripherally second group of drugs that is enoconstrictors we have norepi we have epinephrine we have dopamine so for dopamine all the arsites including the so2 they have declared that it increases the motility in the icu so it is not used anywhere in the icu however in certain situation for example in shock with bradycardia there you can use it but even in those situation also we should first prefer norepinephrine or epinephrine then only dopamine but it can be used in some situation but for majority of the case in the icu we prefer not to use dopamine in any place in the icu right the norepinephrine the alpha action is actually more than beta so it has inotropics means beta 1 this is alpha 1 right that means alpha it will cause vasoconstriction which will be more than inotropism inochronotropic effect because of vasoconstriction what will happen it will cause increase in the systemic vascular resistance and increase in after load right because of anotropic or chronotropic effect it will increase the contractility and it will increase the heart rate right what will be the resultant effect the blood pressure or the mass will increase but about the cardiac output again it depends upon also it will increase the preload here also because of henna constriction preload will increase so the contractility is increased that means cardiac output will increase but at the same time preload also increase that means cardiac output will remain same at the same time preload is increased that means cardiac output will increase if the heart is not contracting well then preload will be detrimental so cardiac output change is quite equivocal we cannot really decide the cardiac output so our target here will be math not from volume 
not connect output because these are variable mean total pressure is not variable here right where it is used mainly as a first line agent in septic shock in cardiogenic shock in undifferentiated shock you do not know what to do there also you can safely introduce no epinephrine now coming to epinephrine here alpha 1 effect almost equal to beta 1 effect but at low dose beta 1 effect predominates heart rate contractility these will be improved at low dose more than the vasoconstriction but at higher doses how one will be more than beta 1 and these two things will change their position so vasoconstriction will be more than heart rate or contractility right and the action remain the same as you have discussed here because of alpha preload will increase after load will increase heart rate will increase because of beta 1 contractility will increase right so it will increase the mean arterial pressure but on cardiac output it is questionable like we have discussed here cardiac output change is equivocal we do not know actually so here also you have to target mean arterial pressure right use second line in septic shock or cardiogenic shock as you see here at low doses the beta effect actually predominates so the contractility improves at low doses it may happen in cardiogenic shock you start with norepinephrine and the bp remains stable and you can in lower doses you can start epinephrine so that will also help the heart to function in a more effective way right so it is not very uncommon to see in the icu in cardiogenic shock patient you start with norepinephrine and at the same time you add a little bit of epinephrine in septic should be different septic should you reach a maximum norepi then you add vasopressin there you add epinephrine right but in cardiogenic shock we can use it same time as norepinephrine right so then second is we use it in anaphylactic shock why anaphylactic shock is a vasodilated state so they are, should be using the pure vasopressors but no because in anaphylaxis there are other symptoms like bronchoconstrictions mast cell activation that's why it is first line choice in anaphylactic shock of course we use epinephrine in a cls algorithms and we use it in prevention of anticipated hypotension for example like induction of anesthesia there can be precipitous fall in the blood pressure there also epinephrine boluses will be very very helpful you know dilators means it has action on beta 1 and beta 2 in the blood vessel so beta 1 will what will it do it will increase the cardiac output by increasing the contractility increase the heart rate and beta 2 is vasodilatation right so this will decrease the systemic vascular resistance right one is dabutamine one is milrinon the reaction is beta 1 there is increase in cardiac output so that will lead to increase in the main arterial pressure right plus the decrease in svr plus increase in cardiac output will cause further increase in mean arterial pressure but decrease in SBR will produce a decrease in mean arterial pressure. So, we have given a drug which is increasing the contractility. So, thereby increasing the cardiac output. But at the same time, it is also decreasing the SBR. That means it is producing a vasodilated state. Right. So, for that reason, peripheral resistance or arterial load will be decreased. So heart is to pump against the lower resistance. So, cardiac output will further increase. That will further increase the blood pressure. Right. But because SVR is increased, there is vasodilatation, the blood pressure will fall. Changes in blood pressure or mean arterial pressure is not 
a constant phenomenon. So here you cannot target like phenylephrine, epinephrine, or if you are targeting the map, here you cannot do that because it's very, very changeable. So here we have to target the cardiac output by targeting stroke volume. Right. So we have to monitor the stroke volume of the patient. So these are the patients who require advanced hemodynamic monitoring. So we have to target the stroke volume 60 to 100. If the patient has the baseline stroke volume of 40 and you start a double time the target should be the stroke volume should reach at 60. Right. Uses are mainly in cardiogenic shock. Why? Because you have discussed previously what happened in cardiogenic shock. MAP is equal to cardiac output in SBR. In cardiogenic shock, cardiac output decreases. To compensate for that, the SBR increases. Right. Vessels are clamped, very, very vessels are clamped, and the cardiac pump is not working. Perfect drug in this case will be a drug which increases the cardiac output and decreases the SBR. And that is what you can achieve by using double terminal mill here. Right. So, perfect drug for cardiogenic shock. But you have to remember, in cardiogenic shock also, the first choice will be epinephrine, nor epinephrine. Because as you have seen here, it decreases the blood pressure. So, if the blood pressure is not being maintained, then it is counterproductive to give double time. Because then it will cause precipitous fall in the blood pressure. Right. The problem is, Monotherapy can cause precipitous fall in blood pressure, right? So it has to be always used with another agent, norepinephrine, norepinephrine, right? It can be also used in septic shock with septic cardiomyopathy. So septic shock agent of choice is norepinephrine, but where the septic shock has produced a cardiomyopathy, there is cardiac dysfunction. There also can be used as so a second line agent, right? Milrinon has much potent vasodilator reaction than dobutamine. But the problem with milrinon is it is renally excreted. So in the ICU, we have most of our patients who has a, a renal problem. So it has to be very difficult to in such a situation. But the advantage of dobutamine is the T half is short. Second, there is receptor down regulation on constant use. So, there is a phenomenon called auto win. So, it is very easy to taper off for self win. So, even if you are giving the drugs beyond 48 hours because the receptor down regulation it will not work. So, you can immediately taper off double terminal milder. You do not have to taper it off slowly, slowly, slowly. You can immediately taper it off, right? The problem with both of them is they increase heart rate, increase myocardial work. So, cardiogenic shock is mostly produced in patients with acute coronary syndrome. So, there you do not want to increase the cardiac work because that will be counterproductive. The muscle at risk, the myocardium at risk, now you are increasing the workload. So, there will be demand ischemia further. This is the disadvantage. And we have another new drug that is levosimandan. It can be used. Levosimandan acts through different receptor and less vasodilation uh, do not seem to increase myocardial work. A final algorithm. So, number one, we have septic shock. Second, we have septic shock with septic cardio myopathy. Third, we have septic shock with atrial fibrillation. Four, we have cardiogenic shock. There we have map maintain map not maintain fifth we have anaphylactic shock we have spinal shock or post anesthesia shock seven refractory shock 
So what are the drug of choice here? So in septic shock, we know nor AP greater a second line will be AP or vaso. In septic shock, septic cardiomyopathy, we can use nor AP, we can plus minus second line AP or vaso. Cardiomyopathy is there, so plus minus if map is maintained, we can use enodilators like dobutamine or pilrod. Cardiomyopathy of map maintained, so nor AP plus dobutamine or milrinol. Map not maintained, nor AP plus epinephrine. Anaphylactic shock, we have epinephrine. Spinal shock, phenylephrine. Refractory shock, where we are adjusted all the existing drugs, we can use spare agents like methylene blue, ascorbic acid, pulse dose, methicoval, all these things are experimental drugs that we can use. So, this is how in nerd cell our approach or rationale to choosing a vasopressor in different kind of shock. Right? Thank you very much.